thank you very much. Buenos días, muchas gracias. Thank you very much to the organizers, to the previous speakers, to Mr. President, everybody here. I'm going to talk in my, in my little 10 minutes, as all the speakers, I will probably run out of time, but before that, I'll try to say the main ideas. No? First of all, I, I, I prefer to say demographic suicide because I think it's more expressive of what is happening. The winter, uh, understanding the winter as the dead season, will come later. We are now not yet in the winter, but we are making, generating the winter. That's why I think uh, demographic suicide is probably more expressive and more compelling. Okay, let's see if this, okay. How, oh, it's the other presentation, so it's, uh, okay. Main ideas, and then I'm gonna show, show some graphics and then I will run out of time, no? The first thing is that the problem is much more uh, important and immediate than most people think. In countries like Spain, they're telling us, or in Germany, that within 20 years there will be a problem with pensions. Well, the problem is, has already arrived and it goes much beyond pensions. This is going to affect the, the, the aging and low fertility and the little ch low, uh, less children and less population. It's going to affect severely the economy, much more than in pensions. It's going to be uh, very harmful for democracy because democracies will be controlled by the lobby of retired people. And, of course, uh, maybe they, their interest is not the general people interest that is supposed to be the democracy. If we, we all uh, fight only for our own interest and not our country interest and there is a dominant lobby or dominant group, maybe uh, they will just shape politics, but not for the best for everybody. Then there is something uh, even more terrible, is that we are, going to, we, we are already in very, very short families. I mean, when we were mostly of us born and our parents, we lived in, in large families with lots of uh, brothers, sisters, lots of cousins, lots of relatives. In the future, with single child, we will have, if there is single child, just one son or daughter and then one uh, grandson, no? one granddaughter. That looks very sad. There will be no siblings, no brothers, no sisters, no uncles, no aunts. I think this is how sad. No? And then even national uh, safety or security for some countries is going to be a jeopardy. I mean, even uh, Kosovo, for instance, is, a, is an example of a place in which the local people that were the Serbians were, uh, had much less fertility than the newcomers, uh, the Kosovars, and then they were the, displaced. No? Ultimately, they lost their country. Okay. What's happening right now? I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about large families. Well, in countries like Spain, around 50% of women and of men, probably, but all the statistics are about women, have one or no ch children, okay? So uh, then the others actually are not creating the, the demographic problem or winter or whatever, but there is half of the population that in fact it's not having children. And then uh, uh, this is due probably to, I mean, many causes were seen, uh, pointed out by the previous speakers, but it has much to do with modern lifestyle. And unfortunately, this is not likely, likely to change much in the future. Then the other half, if they have more children, they, may, they might compensate. Actually, they are already compensating and making the problem uh, less acute. No? So, f uh, large families are a bounty in, in this situation. No? Okay, <clears throat> this is a graphic. I'm going to show you some graphics. I will go very fast. This is the, the inversion of the population pyramid. I mean, in red, you have young people. People have 21, be below 21. In, in blue, you have uh, people at 60 or over. No? When I was 15 years old, it's, it's the left column. I mean, this country was a country, as every country, of children and young people. Now we are in the middle of the graphic. There are already more people aged 60 or more. And in the future, it, it, it's inevitable unless there is a surge, a terrible surge, in, a dramatic surge in, in birth. No? This is the graphic where I started, and this is the history of this country you are now. No? This is the number of births every year. You have a, a, a southern uh, valley that was our civil war that was before World War II. And uh, the interesting thing is at that time we had more children in this country with 40% less population than now. I, uh, there was a rebound in, in births with the uh, uh, arriving of immigrants. This country had never had many immigrants until 15, 20 years. So there was a rebound and this is in blue, but actually uh, removing this effect, uh, native Spaniards, are the red ones in the, in the, in the right part of the, of the graphic. No? We're having fewer children than in the Civil War. That means that anything that people say 
that now there is a lot of, in this country, for instance, unemployment or, or, or life cost is very high. I mean, it's very, we cannot afford whatever. We're much poorer. We're in the middle of one of the worst tragedies that a, people can, a, a population can live, and we had more children then. Okay. This is what's going to happen with the population of Spain in yellow. It's what has happened until uh, this year. Uh, our population grew. Then the last growth in the last decade is all immigrants. And now immigrants are leaving. This country is in crisis. If we don't have more immigrants or more children, uh, we will have decline more or less like that. I mean, this is a, a projection. It's not a prediction. If nothing changes, we will decline. And by the way, population in average will be much older. So it's not only less people, but much older people in average. OK, what happens for the economy with uh, demographic winter or sweet side? We're going to have less growth. This is already happening. Countries like Germany without exports or without Japan will be permanently stagnated or in decline because they have less population already every year. We're going to have uh, in countries like Spain where uh, high, uh, and probably in, in almost all the countries where, where senior people have higher salaries. With the reversal of the population pyramid, there are, let's say, too many. So uh, many of them are actually uh, fired off companies because companies cannot afford anymore to pay the salaries. In all restructurings in countries like Spain, people over 50 are kicked out and they have a hard time to find a new job. We're going to have uh, fewer entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurship is something. The first company you make in your life, you have to be young. Maybe if you have been an entrepreneur your, all your life, you will be an entrepreneur at 60. But you cannot start being an, uh, it's very difficult to start being an entrepreneur at 60 because if you fail, you don't have time to recover. When you're young, you have time to recover. Of course, there will be a, an increasing cost of pensions, of, of health care. Countries like Spain, 50% of all uh, uh, medicines are, are uh, consumed by people over 65 years old. There will be depreciation of all assets like houses. And of course, there will be fewer opportunities for uh, uh, businesses in your country. If your country is aging, then you have to, you have to go abroad. And you can go, for instance, uh, companies like Repsol, the Spanish Petroleum Company, goes to a country like Argentina, and suddenly there is a populist government say, no, your property is my property. This is what happens sometimes when you have to go to another country because you don't have enough opportunities in your own country. Okay, this is what's going to happen. This graphic is the number of people with 60 or more in the uh, total number of voters in Spain, in a country like Spain. So more and more and more, they're going to dominate uh, democracy in this country and in all the countries. And uh, as I was saying in my introduction, the, for me, the saddest thing of all probably is that we're going to go to very, very uh, small, short uh, families. I have 22 cousins. My children have six. And this has happened in almost every family. You know? We have less and less, and this is very sad. In the past, we were in the, in the right of the graphic. You know? We had families with a lot of life, a lot of people. Now, one, two, maybe none. And the worst thing of all, probably, is that we are not only going to live longer, but there's going to be a big pressure of killing all people and of mistreating them. Because, because of economics, it's going to be a burden. I mean, 40% of people over 65, uh, is the rest of the people going to be willing uh, to really support them? There will going to be more and more cases. They will call, OK, I finish, no? OK, just uh, for large families to say that just one last graphic, unless we have more large families. I mean, this is the number of uh, people with one child and no children. Without more large families, we cannot do anything. Thank you.